everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika. Today we are doing my Lisa Eldridge lipstick collection video. I will be swatching all of the shades I own on the back of my hand as well as on my lips and we're going to chat about these beautiful, beautiful Velvet Blur lipsticks. I also own two of her insanely saturated formula, which I think is no longer around. I'm not sure. I don't think they restocked the last time these restocked. Since these are a more expensive lipstick, I don't own the entire line, but I do have a good chunk of it. The shades I am missing are Velvet Fawn, Velvet Affair, Velvet Beauty, and Velvet Morning. So the two lighter nudes, a more like muted pinky shade, and an orange toned red. Those are the ones I don't currently own, but I do have all the other ones from the line. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 lipsticks for you here. So let's get swatching. So before we get started, I'm just going to take off the lipstick I am currently wearing, which is Verbena Bye Bye Beauty. I've had this on all morning, so uh, I'm just going to take that off. So the way we're going to go through it is I have sort of like a neutrally more wearable everyday kind of section that I have some brights, I've got reds, and I've got the deeper, darker, vampier shades. One thing I really appreciate about Lisa Eldridge's lipstick line is the undertones of the lipsticks. I don't know how she does it, but the way, if you've ever watched a Lisa Eldridge video and the way she talks about color, also check out her, her book if you don't know anything about this, but she just sees color in such a unique way and she's translated that, that view on color into her lipstick line. And there's just something about these undertones that I feel make these lipsticks perfect for so many different people, no matter your skin tone. On her website, you can also see the lipstick swatched on models with different skin tones and like different lip colors and all that. You need to know about my lips. Like I just took off a lipstick and you can see I have pretty, pretty uh, naturally pigmented lips. So let's talk about the nudes. And I have two of her more nude lipsticks. And this is, uh, the first one I bought was Velvet Muse. So this is what that shade looks like. And all of these Velvet Blur lipsticks have this like velvety texture on the bullet itself, which is just, it makes it look so much more um, like luxurious than it already is. And this gold packaging with her logo on the cap is just, it's great. Uh, what's not so great about the packaging is that the magnets on these are very strong and they sort of push them themselves apart. So if you have more of these, like I have, you can't really nicely sit them together unless you have an organizer to keep them together because these will just literally like bounce off each other because these magnets are so strong. However, Velvet Muse is described by Lisa Eldridge, I believe, as like a rosewood kind of shade. And that really appealed to me because I prefer a nude that has like a pinky purpley brownish undertone on myself that I find goes with a lot of things that I like to wear. Uh, and by the way, if I look bright very suddenly, we had snow, there's a lot of light reflecting off this snow, plus I have sun coming in and out. There's a lot I can do co to control my video settings, but the sun, I'm afraid, and like cloud cover, I cannot control. So I do apologize a little bit if the color or the, the lighting is a bit whacked out sometimes, but that, is what Velvet Muse looks like. And I, look, look, did you just see that it has like brown and pink and like the undertone of these shades? Oh, so let me put this on my lips for you. And this is what Velvet Muse would look like on me. On me, this is my perfect nude. In fact, it's so perfect that when I made a Bite Beauty lipstick myself in the Bite Beauty lab, asking for my perfect nude, I didn't own this one yet, um, I came up with this shade. This is just, this is exactly what I'm looking for. It's got a bit of brown, a little bit of pink. It's got enough depth that it looks good on my complexion, especially today I'm wearing a very neutral look precisely because I'm filming this video. So yeah, I'm very fair, blonde hair, but I do have deeper eyes and like darker brows naturally. So for me to go in with a very pale nude, it just really washes me out and it never looks right on me. So I like to go with a nude that has a little bit more depth and dimension to it so that my look just comes together a lot more. But I think that for everyday wear, you can still very much 
get away with something like this. As you can see, if you just really want to lift your complexion, you want something that's not going to dis distract from anything you've got going on, then Velvet Muse is my favorite of the entire line to do that. Moving on then to the other more nudie tone I have, and that would be Velvet Blush. And Velvet Blush is a little bit more plummy almost than Velvet Muse. Uh, if I swatch them side by side, you can see it. And this is one I think she came out with in uh, the f this fall. So this is quite new to her line. Do you see that Velvet Muse is a bit more brownish pink? Rosewood, I think, is indeed the, the color description that I would give to this shade like this. And that this one, Velvet Blush, is again a little bit deeper and it's got a bit more plum to it. So uh, I think that this is good for those days where I'm wearing something a bit more cool toned. Uh, the other one is just a little bit, it has more warmth to it, I would say. So again, for me, this is the kind of nude shade that just works on me. Same great formula. These stay on all day and yet they still feel very comfortable on the lips. They're just amazing lipsticks. I love these. And that would be Velvet Blush on me. As you can see, again, a little bit deeper. This is for me, uh, perhaps not as much of a nude as Velvet Muse is, but it is still very wearable for every day. It's got that plumminess that I like, but I feel that on my lips, it almost pulls a bit more red, which I know sounds weird, but on me, some of the warmth just comes through a little bit more. So if I need something like that's more in between, a nude and something like this. So where the line truly really shines for me is in, is in some of the like more brighter and reddish tones that she does. Those are absolute perfection. Um, and the first one I want to show you is one I don't think you can still get. It's Skyscraper Rose and this is a uh, insanely saturated lipstick. So these lipsticks uh, were released I think a, not this fall but the year before that and I don't think these have come back which is a shame because Skyscraper Rose is like I don't really love pinks on me so all that much but this is a pink but yeah, this is the kind of pinky shade that is just it's got depth but it's bright at the same time so this is a very wearable pink in my book but it's not very white based it's more like it's not even a fuchsia like this it's 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 so difficult to describe this shade because it has a little bit of everything it's got a little bit of red a little bit of pink it's not a coral it's not a fuchsia but it's still like like i said a rose i think like a very vibrant rose that's what i would be able that's what i would describe this as let me put this on So that would be Skyscraper Rose on me. As you can see, it's bright, it's poppy, but it's not that bright and poppy like one of the other pinks I have from her, which we'll see in a minute, which has a much stronger white base, which makes it a lot like more in your face. Like this is still a statement to wear, but it is a little bit more muted. You can still get away with wearing something like this to the office very easily. I mean, I wear all of these to work without fail, like that's just who I am. But this is the kind of pink where I think it's bright, it's fun, great, great lipstick for the spring summer season for sure. This would be Skyscraper Rose. And then the other insanely saturated lipstick that I have is Rainbow Spill, and I do believe this came back. Uh, this is a very bright, like, coral shade you could say but it is like a matte texture but it's very very in your face very vi vibrant very bright this is one where i feel like i can get away with it but i'm perhaps a little bit too pale for it right now this is definitely more like a height of summer kind of shade for me right now i think it might drain me a bit too much uh, but that this is a lovely shade uh, and it has a little bit of like it's like a neon peach if that makes sense. And what I also love about these lipsticks is how precisely they are at applying your lip line. Like I like I never really feel I need lip liner with any lipstick, but these make it even easier just to really get a good line around your lips. I feel I don't need any lip liner with these. So yeah, let's put on, um, no, uh, Rainbow Spill.
and that is what Rainbow Spill would look like on me. So this is, again, a really lovely lipstick shade, but as I mentioned, this is the kind of lipstick that I would wear more so in the height of summer, then this will be a lot more poppy and a lot more vibrant, and it will go with my complexion a lot more. I think it still works, it's just, it kind of drains me right now, like I look very fair. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, out of all of these lipsticks, this is the only shade where I feel I can see some more of the lines of my lips. And I think it has to do with the shade more so than with the formula, because it still feels very creamy and slippy, like every single one of these lipsticks. This is the only one, though, where I really have to make that effort. None of the other shades, I feel, uh, require that amount of work to make it look opaque, even, and that it doesn't emphasize any texture on my lips. Final bright shade then would be Velvet Carnival, and Velvet Carnival is the bright pink that she released last fall, and I remember spotting this shade and going like, that's one I want. <laughs> this is the one that I really want to own from this new line, because I really like, when it comes to pinks, I want them to be super vibrant, and this is a very vibrant, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's this very vibrant, almost white-based kind of pink. It reminds me a lot of Candy Yum Yum by MAC, but then a little deeper. So where Candy Yum Yum can be a little bit like Rainbow Spill, a bit flat because of its white base, this is what Candy Yum Yum would be if it had more depth to it. That's the way I would describe it. So do you just see that we go very bright? So Skyscraper Rose is also, like, it fits in the same family for me, but it's it's less neon. It has more depth to it, whereas this is sort of like, boom, in your face. Like, this is so bright that my camera can't even pick up on it. That's what's happening here. And Velvet Carnival is the kind of pink where I'm like, ah, yes! Uh, I love a good bright pink on me, so let's throw this on. And that would be what Velvet Carnival looks like on me. Do you just see that this kind of bright shade, like unlike Rainbow Spill, and it's probably because it's more peachy leaning that it doesn't go with my complexion as well right now, but this is the kind of bright pink that I can get away with year round if I'd want to. This is just the kind of thing where I'm like, ooh, yes, this is the kind of lipstick that, I know, come spring, summertime, I'm going to be wearing this so, so much. Let's move on to reds. And the first red I have for you is called Velvet Dragon. This was also a new release this fall, and it's an orange-toned red, but it's an orange-toned red with more of like a spicy, brownish undertone rather than a very vibrant, like, Mac Lady Danger sort of like, boom, warning sign kind of red, and if that makes sense. It reminds me a little bit of Max Chili. So if you're familiar with Max Chili, which is like a brown toned red, then this I would say is like that, but then with more orange to it. It's just really spicy, yummy. This is the kind of red I go for in the fall time. So do you just see how spicy this is? This really reminds me of like the sort of shades you see in a night, like these like Moroccan spice markets, you know, where you have all of the different flavors. That's just what comes to mind to me when I see a shade like this. Like I mentioned, in the fall, I love something like this. I think again that right now, I am too fair to pull this off. <laughs> Let me put this on. and that would be Velvet Dragon on me. As you can see, on me, it doesn't even pull very orange, it almost pulls yellow leaning. Like, it's almost like, it's got this curry yellow undertone that really shows up on me. I love it. It's definitely a very unique shade in my lipstick collection. We all know I love reds, <laughs> so uh, you knew I would love this, and this is just, it's just a little bit different, you know? Let's move on to the next one. And that next one is possibly one of my favorite reds in my entire lipstick collection. This is Velvet Ribbon. This is her classic blue-toned red. However, I find that compared to something like Charlotte Tilbury's Red Carpet Red 
or Max Russian Red that this is a little brighter almost. This is so bright and vibrant in terms of red that it just really makes your teeth look so much whiter. This is like, this, this is the kind of red and this is how I feel about a lot of reds. It's just an instant pick me up. And for a classic red, I feel that she came up with something unique because there are so many classic reds on the market at so many different price points. And I felt that she really honed in on what makes a classic red the best classic red for so many different people. So there we have Velvet Ribbon. And do you just see that it's so, so bright. Again, my camera has difficulty picking up on it. In the viewfinder, it almost looks a bit pinky. I hope it doesn't once I edit this video. But yeah, this is just, it's perfection. It stays put all day. It's got the rich, creamy texture. It feels comfortable on the lips. It doesn't dry your lips out though. It's, this is perfection. And especially in the reds, I feel that that blurry sort of texture that the bullet has when you first open it is the most noticeable. This is gorgeous, gorgeous. Let me put this on so you can see what it looks like on me. And that is Velvet Ribbon on me. As you can see, instant facelift makes my face come alive. That's how I feel about reds. That's why I love red lipstick so much. Personally, I just really like this. I think there's something about the paleness of my skin. Like this just really makes me look like Snow White, but I like that. With my hair, with my brows, like with my natural complexion, just something happens when I put on a red lipstick, something happens. And with this particular lipstick, I feel it is amplified even more than with some of the other reds that I have in my collection last red lipstick would be Velvet Jazz. If a bright, vampy, like classic red isn't really for you, then try this. This is a little more like that 1930s kind of red where it's like it's got more depth to it. Like, the, like that really classic red is more like a 1950s like ooh in your face kind of red. This is more like that movie star red. But yeah, Velvet Jazz is her deeper red, which is why I bought it because deeper reds like this that are still very wearable are super difficult to find, I found. Lipstick of my dreams. Like I, like a darker toned red lipstick that is still red, that doesn't pull berry, is really difficult to do and she nailed it. So let me show you Velvet Jazz. So there you have Velvet Jazz swatched out. Do you just see that it has a lot more depth than either one of the other two? So this is going to be that vampy sort of like, like this is something that I would wear to like a party or like dinner. Like if you want to have a red that is work great for like an occasion, this is the kind of red I would go for. So let me show you what this looks like on. And it takes no effort to put this on at all. Like it just, it just goes on so seamlessly, so smoothly. This is one of my favorites from the line because I, like I said, I have so many classic reds. So even though I really like a classic bright red like vel Velvet Ribbon, for sure, Velvet Jazz is where it's at for me. Like this, you might look at this lipstick and go like, oh, that's very dark, very ugh. But then you put it on and just your entire look comes together. Let's move on to the last three, which are my vampy ones. And the first deeper shade I wanna show you is Velvet Decade. And this is one she lost, she launched this fall. And she was raving about this being a super universal dark brown, chocolate brown for everyone. And I was like, well, Lisa, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to take you for your word on that because brown lipstick and me, we usually don't gel well. However, here we come again with the undertone love uh, that I have for these lipsticks is that your, these, the, the colors are blended in such a way that there's always a, an undertone in the lipstick that will pick up with your complexion to make it that universally flattering shade. On me, Velvet Decade doesn't look super brown. It picks up on a lot of the red when I wear it. You will see it in a minute when I put it on, but this pulls quite red on me. To me, this is very much out of my comfort zone. 
I don't love browns. I definitely don't like really dark browns on me. Like they very often just don't work, but there's something about this that works and it's that red. So let me put this on. So I like wearing this lipstick full on, <laughs> full intensity, because that I, I think works on me. The way I kind of feel about this when I'm wearing it, especially with my super fair skin, is that it gives me this like sepia effect, <laughs> if that makes any sense. That's uh, what's going on with this lipstick. So this is Velvet Decade. As you can see, on my hand, it looks more like a cool tone brown. On my lips, it pulls a bit red. But just when you think you can't go any vampier than that, she's got some more because we also have Velvet Myth. And this is the, the deep, deep, deep red that is part of her line. It's deeper even than Velvet Myth. Uh, no, Velvet Jazz. This one is called Velvet Myth Mica. Uh, I do tend to like mix up the shade names. Um, but this is that... If Max Sin was more of a red, then this is what you would get. So I love Max Sin in like the fall winter season because it really sort of makes me look super pale. I know. Sometimes I want to amp up the paleness, you could say. So if we swatch it, that is what Velvet Myth looks like. And this, again, do you just see that it's a, a red? It's still a red. It doesn't have anything too plum or berry to it even though it does pull a little bit berry on me because it does have a bit more purple to it. Let me put this on. And there we have Velvet Myth. And you can see that it again pulls more like a very deep red on me. Like, again, deeper vampire shades like this I love wearing especially in the winter time because it really sets off against my pale skin uh, it, it sort of really makes me like like I always call myself snow white in the winter time that I turn into snow white and this emphasizes that embrace the paleness and this is what we're working with so I really like how again this sets off with my hair color against my super duper pale skin. Does it make me look paler? Yes, but it also, I feel, makes my skin <laughs> look a little more flawless almost. Something just pops and that's what I like to do. We have one more shade to go. And that final shade is Velvet Midnight. And this to me is very similar to Velvet Myth, but where Velvet Myth is red, this is like the plummy version of that. It's even deeper. Um, I think that this is sort of like what, I think, doesn't MAC have like a shade called Blackberry, which is like this super deep, like black and plum? That's how I would describe this as well. This is a black and plum. It really picks up on the plumminess when I wear it that I feel I can still get away with this for everyday wears. And can you just see how, you know, that's Velvet Decade, so that's brown. This is red, and then this is very purple when I swatch it on my very pale skin. It looks super purple and dark uh, once it's on my skin, but on my lips it's going to look a little differently. So let me show you that. And that would be Velvet Midnight and what that looks like on. I believe she called this the lipstick from like the silent movie era. So really that like Clara Bow kind of like very sculpted sort of lip look that this is the kind of shade that they would have worn in the 20s. I would agree with that. This is definitely a very 1920s inspired kind of shade. It just has, again, something. It pulls a lot more plum on me than what it looks like in the swatch. Like a lot of that purple is coming through and that's why I like it. It pulls very cool toned on me for some reason. It's really strange. So if I want to amplify the cool toned look, like especially if I'm wearing something like a Naked 2 or something like Colourpop's That's Taupe, if I'm wearing these like very cool toned eye looks, a lipstick like this is just absolutely stunning. This is a super gorgeous lipstick. And yeah, this is what the entire Lisa Eldridge lipstick line looks like on me. So those are all of the lipstick that I wanted to show 
in this video today, so thank you very much for watching the video. Let me know in a comment down below which Lisa Eldridge lipsticks you have or that you are lusting after because these can be hard to find because there tends to be only one restock a year, which usually happens in the fall times. So this is what all of these Lisa Eldridge lipsticks do for me. I hope this is also helpful if you're trying to make decisions on which shades to get. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week on this channel, so I hope you would like to stay tuned for more. Thank you very much for watching. I see you on my next one. Bye-bye.